super duper bad anxiety is like rising to my chest right now. It's awful. It may be a stressful week, but I am like handling it like a boss. We are blind if we believe that every single child in our room is going to be on task all the time. How many times do we as like, as adults sit in a meeting and we check our email or we start talking to somebody or we get distracted with um, having testing done and they came back with me having Hashimoto's. <laughs> this week is gonna be one of those weeks where I am just gonna be flipping exhausted every single day <laughs> and it's gonna I'm just gonna have to live through it um this week is a very very busy week for me just to kind of give you guys a rundown I have uh, um a meeting tonight with parents we're kind of inviting parents out to be able to come and um, have us kind of walk through our individualized schedules that we've started since January um, walk through Schoology explain through them the process of everything and how it actually works so that they can kind of get a better idea of like what are their kids doing throughout the day um, we're also doing this before conferences because we don't want Schoology or schedules to take up the entire conversation. So tonight is going to be a late night for me. Tomorrow night is also our community book read. So um, my district has been reading Freedom to Learn as like a book read and so they all get together and they have like a conversation about it. So that's tomorrow night. Um, I also have an observation. I have a meeting for uh, CIA which, which is curriculum instruction and assessment that I have to go to tomorrow morning. Um, let's see. <laughs> so observation, conferences, DRAs are due, writing assessments are due, report cards are due. Um, did I say conferences on Friday? Conferences are on Friday. Well at least they, the first set of conferences are on Friday. Um, so there's a lot going on a lot going on this week and I kind of knew coming into it that it was just gonna be a really busy week but I do kind of feel my anxiety just stress level just kind of rising this morning like I've just kind of been on edge so I'm gonna have to try to slow it down and try to relax a little bit so that I'm not uh, stressing myself out to the point of no return so really quick before I jump into the day I wanted to show you guys this bag um, a company very generously sent this to me they did not pay me to uh, um, like speak highly of it so this is not an ad but they did send me the product just so that I can kind of give my point of view I guess like what I thought about it on my channel the company is called Coot and Coo, Cute and Coo, Cute and Coo. And I will go ahead and say that this is a diaper bag. However, uh, I felt like diaper bags are really make really really great teacher bags. Um, they are incredibly easy. They're durable. They're like easy to clean. They have tons of pockets. Like it's everything that a teacher could have possibly uh, like want in a bag. But what I love about it the most is number one, it's a backpack. Um, I am very very fond of my backpacks for teacher bags. I just like them. I like that I can just kind of put them on my back and I can just go. Um, so this one is a backpack which I really like but it also has handles up here at the top so that you can carry it like a bag if you don't want to walk into a meeting like I'm about to do tomorrow with a backpack on your shoulder you can at least kind of have it in your hand um, but what's also really great about it is that it fits so much stuff like it's huge it's huge whereas like my little black one that my mom gave me which I totally love um, but you can only fit like a computer and maybe a, a notebook or a planner or something to in there. I can fit all of my stuff in here, which is pretty amazing between computer, planner, books that I'm reading, um, my iPad that I have. What else can I fit in there? I'm thinking like papers that I have to grade. All of those things can fit inside of this bag, which I find like really, really nice. Um, I like the little pocket up here to be able to put my keys and my phone in there when I'm storing it um, while... I'm in the classroom and then down here at the bottom it has like another little pocket for you to put like a hard drive and pens and pencils like I have in there but um, I've been using it for about two weeks now and I do really really love it I went with the beige color because I wanted something I guess a little bit more 
lights for spring <laughs> um, but they do have some really nice colors and a really cute pattern it's like a, a French stripe I think is what they call it but it's really really nice I hope that you guys go and check them out I will leave a link down in the description box so that you guys can go and uh, look at their product and see what you think and maybe you need to kind of refresh your wardrobe or your um, bag system before spring comes so that you can feel renewed and fresh but um, so it is our, uh, I don't I guess you would call her an assistant. She's our assistant that kind of helps us in our classroom. She works a lot with our kids. She's a lot for us. Um, she is constantly like making sure our babies are like all on top of it and doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. But it was her birthday yesterday. So the teachers, like everybody in part of the Mac team kind of got together and said, well, let's do something for her birthday because she does do so much for us. Um, so here is my contribution to kind of the big gift that everybody, um, we're all kind of saying it's from us, but Here's what I decided to, with my partners, to get. Okay, it definitely doesn't come with the computer or all the stuff that's in here, but I went on ahead and I got her the cart from Target. So I got her a great cart from Target because she tends to go like from room to room and she doesn't really have anywhere to put her belongings. So we thought that this would be a really cute idea to be able to stick um, her stuff inside of so that she can just take it wherever she needs to go. I like it. So that's what I got. I also did go to Walmart this morning um, and picked up some containers to like store um, little bits and bobs inside of it so that she can have kind of a nice little storage system going on in here instead of everything just kind of being thrown around. So I'm trying to get everything out so I can show it to you. But I went to Walmart <clears throat> and then I just found these. Um, same like same idea from like the Dollar Tree um, and five below like I think these were about like four bucks or something to that extent but I thought that they would be really nice I'm gonna kind of set them up set them up arrange them right here down in the middle so that she could store some dry erase items and other like pens and things that uh, a few of the other teachers got to be able to contribute and add to the cart um, we also got her some flowers so hopefully she'll be surprised and know how much we do truly truly appreciate her so I'm gonna get these together and then I can start unloading all my other badness okay so there you go that's what we have um, like I said, my partner's kind of got some things to be able to put inside of it. Some dry erase boards, some expo markers, um, lo other little bits and bobs. But that's kind of it for the most part. She's going to be able to arrange it the way that she wanted. But we just wanted it to look nice for her. I feel like it is something very, very simple, but I hope that she really likes it. So now that she has, like whenever she's working with kids, if sometimes she wants to work in the hallway or wherever she wants to go, she can just kind of wheel her little cart out there and she has it. It looks nice. So I don't know if you guys have seen, but um, Mr. G, my cousin, and I did a kind of Q&A teacher talk style video um, where we kind of sat down together and we just talked about some questions that you guys had that were on Instagram. If you haven't checked it out, definitely go and check it out. We have some really good insight and my cousin and I are just silly sometimes. So <laughs> you'll probably get a good laugh out of us. Um, but I'm mentioning this because in one of the questions, someone mentions like, how do you deal with like hardships? when you're going through like a struggle. Um, I feel like this week might be one of those types of hardships for me, not personally, but just like in work in general, um, because it is gonna be such a crazy, crazy busy week. Uh, and I can already feel it. So instead of me actually taking the time to, I don't know, like clean off my table <laughs> and uh, I don't know, like, move all the mess that I have. I am choosing to pull out a gluten-free donut that my <laughs> partner got me and I just need to take a minute and I'm just gonna pay attention to myself for a little bit because I can feel the stress coming in. Y'all, I'm serious, like super duper bad anxiety is like rising to my chest right now. It's awful. Ugh. And I don't even have bad anxiety. Like, I feel bad for people who really do have, like, legit hardcore... I'm, like, leaning trying to get my donut. I'm sorry. There's my donut. Um, I feel super bad for people who are straight up, like, have true bad, like, panic attack anxiety. Like, I've never experienced that type of anxiety. And I don't want to ever experience it. But, Lord almighty, I am, like, 
I'm taking deep breaths because I'm struggling. My little heart can't handle it today. I gotta get my donut. <laughs> my gluten-free donut. Y'all, okay, so again, I'm moving away from school because this is the last thing. I should really be thinking about school, but I really don't want to think about school at the moment. So this weekend, we had a friend of the family who came into town um he's a friend of my husband's side of the family and i've like we've known him since i've known him since i've gotten married to my husband obviously um and uh, on sunday my mother-in-law was like well why don't you guys come over for dinner just you know it's chuck la it's chuck's last night let's kind of you know all hang out together so i was like absolutely and i had mentioned to her on saturday that i um was removed from gluten so I couldn't eat gluten and so my freaking amazing mother-in-law made everything last night gluten-free every food she made two different desserts she had like three different dishes going on everything was gluten-free and I just felt so loved and appreciated <laughs> I was like you really didn't have to do all that for me but Thank you for doing that for me because that means that I can just eat everything and not be okay and not be afraid of like eating anything. Um, on another note, gluten free people did not realize I have to be careful. Well, I mean, I should have realized that I should be careful with candies, but my mom sent a package this weekend for the boys and like us for Valentine's Day. And so we opened it when it got here because I mean, how do you not open up a package that comes in the mail? Like you're super excited about it. And inside of it, my mom had a huge tin of just like chocolates. It was like, they're like the little shaped, heart shaped um, Reese peanut butter, like pe Reese's peanut butter cups and then a bunch of Hershey Kisses. Okay, y'all, I did not look, and this is my fault, I did not look to see if Reese's cups were gluten-free. Apparently, the ones that are like the holiday ones that are like molded by a certain shape are not gluten-free. I had probably, I don't know, like 20 of them. It was awful. <sighs> it was awful <laughs> um so i regretted that immediately but i'll do better today i am gonna do better today all right i need to sit down with my planner think about what it is i need to get done today and plan everything out once i have it done i am going to show you guys how i go through the process of like planning things Okay, so here is the first thing that I do with my planner once um, I'm just ready to start kind of planning out my day. Uh, I use stickers. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. It just depends. Right now, I bought a little book, and let me see if I can find it. Here it is. I found this little book of stickers from Michaels, and it has it's all productivity so it's like create 365 but it's productivity so it has like a lot of those little list um stickers which i like to use so i place one for my projects for the week and then every day i do a top three so i kind of just rotate them out um and then i put in any meetings or anything that i need to know about the day then that way i can start looking and creating my top three list and then any other to-do list i just kind of add towards the very bottom So I was here pretty late last night. I think I got home around like 8.15. Um, we decided probably a couple weeks ago um, that we were gonna hold a, almost like a tech night for our families. Um, just on Schoology, on our individualized schedules, how everything is going, what their kids are doing throughout the day. I feel like there's a huge disconnect um, once you get from the lower elementary grade levels from like K to three to going into like your intermediate, your middle school. Um, they just don't know what's going on as much. And it's harder when you have multiple teachers because, and then everybody's on a different, you know, everybody's learning different things, but it's a little bit harder that way. So uh, we decided that we wanted to hold, I was putting my lights on y'all, I'm sorry. Um, but we decided that we wanted to hold this like tech night for our families. Um, we had a really good turnout, which I'm very, very excited about. We had great feedback from families. Um, they were really, really uh, 
appreciative of the time that we were giving them to be able to sit down with their kids. Their kids were walking them through Schoology, showing them how they submit assignments, showing them how they get to their learner tasks, figuring out what it is that they are, they're expected to do on a day-to-day -day basis, how do they reach their materials, um, and I don't know, it was really, really good. I love my families. I love them so much. So this morning I have a meeting at our district office. Um, I'm part of the CIA which is the Curriculum Instruction and Assessment Committee um, for the district like district wide. So we get together once every other month to uh, discuss curriculum instruction assessment and then how can we better ourselves in those areas. Um, so that means I'm gonna be out for half of a day. Uh, I did get a sub early this morning. I did not know if I was gonna find a sub at all. <laughs> I feel like subs are very like scarce these days. Um, but I did was able to get a sub this morning. She just kind of, she just like picked it up. Someone just picked it up for me. So I got my plans together. So. I ended up not vlogging for the rest of the night yesterday just because I was rushing to try to get ready for that. Um, I was trying to shove food down my throat before the meeting actually began. I was able to run off some copies of certain things. Like we, what we wanted to do is give them a rundown, an explanation of each of the rotations. So like, what does WTW mean? What are they doing during WTW? What does SSR mean? What does, what are they doing during their independent readings and math times? What is it that they're doing during um, STEM? So I kind of did like a little explanation page for them um that just kind of listed each of them out y'all it was not fancy at all it was like a it was not cute in any way shape or form but um i was able to get that done and then i kind of created a little evening work for them so that they came in um we gave them about 10 or 15 minutes to be able to and i can show that to you but we gave them 15 minutes to be able to just kind of talk with their kids look through their folders so um, you can kind of see this here. So we had questions, comments, and kudos that parents were able to kind of leave inside of our box. Um, we had a welcome Mac families. So this right here just told them to locate their child's work in progress folder, which are these back here. Um, it also had them going through and looking at their schedules, taking a gallery walk to looking at some of the posters. Um, and then feel free to like take any questions down that they had, um, while they had like those first 15 minutes to be able to write anything down. So in the beginning we had during our content and what is it called my content time um we had the kids kind of brainstorm and come up with different charts for their families so we talked to them about what are some of the different things that your families are going to want to know about we first approached it with all right how many of you have you have your parents ever said hey what did you do at school today of course all the little hands shoot up and then I was like how many of you say oh no it was fine and of course some of their hands shot up so this was also that purpose of trying to opening up that conversation of hey I was able to look at your learner task today you're working on theme what did you guys do so on and so forth because they can identify they can find that very easily in Schoology now um, so the kids got together and we separated them into their houses and each house had three posters that they were responsible for um, um, but they had to kind of write down um, everything that they thought their parents would want to know about each of those different areas. So um, what did they want to know about how the Schoology layout is? What is it that you do during small groups? Um, so I can show you a couple of these posters. So this was the small group math and reading poster that they came up with. Um, the words their way poster. I really like that here they kind of wrote out what it was that they were expected to do on each of the days, which made my little heart happy. Um, so there's that one they also completed sorry this has tape on it y'all um they also created a frequently asked question so what do you do when you're done what do you do when you um do not finish your work what do you do what are our work in progress folders for it just made me happy to be able to see what they wrote down for independent reading they kind of wrote down um thoughts too i really liked what this student said um Let's see, you can sometimes be in a group or a partner or it will be independent for a group activity. So <laughs> I like that they put for a group activity, but you're independent for a group activity. <laughs> We're gonna work on that. 
Um, organizations, so they talked about what is it that they have in their work in progress folder, their mailboxes, Schoology, task sheets, etc. So it was just a really great way. We had these all laid out inside of the library because that's where we were all set up. So I just kind of put them around the perimeter of the library and for those first 15 minutes as parents kind of were walking in and getting themselves situated and settled, um, they were looking at that little, you know, evening work and it said for them to kind of take a gallery walk to kind of discuss what each of the areas were. So so the kids were invited to come with them with their iPads and they were able to kind of walk them through each of the posters. We had that discussion during um, our content time and I feel like it was a really, really powerful way to kind of start the conversations with their kids, which is what they needed. They needed someone to kind of help start those conversations. Um, so. Either way, it was a really good night. But by the time it was all over and I was like a frantic hot mess, I had to go home and uh, finish up my pre-observation form for my observation tomorrow. <laughs> I am just like all over the place this week. It's going to be an insane week for me. Or it is. Or it is just an insane week for me. Um, so I went home last night. Um, I just like quickly got myself my stuff together right after the uh, meeting with parents and I was able to go home and fill out my my pre-observation forms and get my lesson plans finished up and tweaked so that I can submit that to my assistant principal. Um, I have my pre-observation meeting with him at 2.30 today so that's during my special break um, and we're going to sit down and we're going to go over what is it that he's going to observe so he's coming in to observe two different rotations. Um, he will see my CPM group and then my algebra group. Um, so I'm excited to do that. CPM is just starting some a new unit and then my algebra group is working on order of operations which I really really like. So I enjoy both of those like lessons in themselves. Um, but yes, Whew. I feel like there's a lot going on. So I'm gonna get my lesson plans printed, get everything together for her. She only has a few rotations. Um, one of my partners is gonna take my CPM group so that I'm not behind with them for yes for tomorrow um, because that would really suck if I was like behind. The other one is just kind of doing some review. She's not gonna teach them the new content. So uh, I can keep that for myself for tomorrow for my observation and nothing kind of gets like fudged up there. Um, but that's really about it. That's all I have going on. I have like 45 minutes. Okay. I am going to go print out my lesson plan, get everything together, and then uh, try to clean up my room a little bit because it's a little bit of a mess. So, so I'm not sure if I've told you guys, but I ended up um, getting my, uh, what is it, this little small filing cabinet that I had in kindergarten, I ended up placing it back here. Um, I just like it a little bit better. It looks a little bit more clean and neat. Um, a lot of this stuff I'm going to end up in eventually try to like move into those two cabinets because I do just typically try to keep this one cabinet door open um, and I can access all of my materials from there. So I'm not really sure what I want to do with it yet. I just, I wanted it to look a little bit more clean and less cluttered and messy, if that makes sense. Um, so... I have uh, my folder system in here. Let me see. And then I have uh, some theme stuff that they're going to be doing today. So I think that was all I had. Whoa, my coloring looks really weird, right? And uh, I don't think I have anything else for them. Nope. Okay. So this is for one group. I have my lesson plans here. I can stick that. Um, so a company sent me, actually Scholastic, the author themselves, were kind of promoting this text. And they sent me this book to be able to use inside of the classroom. And they sent me a couple of like extra copies to be able to give to my library and um, use at home with my own children. And I thought it was a really, really great book for me to be able to use within a small group setting. Um, especially for my lower leveled readers. So this book is called Meet the Bobs and Tweets. It has a very like Dr. Seuss feel um, just because of the rhyming words and the illustrations themselves um, mimic a lot what kind of Dr. Seuss did. But 
I really like this text. It is about a family of bobs who are slobs, as you can see, and the family of tweets who are very, very neat. Well, the family of bobs, they move to a street where the tweets live. Um, and it's about this little friendship that starts to kind of grow between two family members. And I think it's really cute just to kind of discuss uh, character traits and what do we know about characters and kind of inferring different pieces uh, throughout the text. So I'm doing this with my uh, my lower level leveled group that I have in the mornings. They are a about a first grade reading level um, and they're really enjoying this book so far. I really like it. I like and something that, like this is probably really weird but I really like the texture of the cover. Like it has that very soft feel to it. I don't know. It's like very velvety feel. I love it. Like I could just, oh, I like this book. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys because I think it's a really great text um, to use, especially if you're not wanting to do Dr. Seuss, but you want to kind of stick with that whole rhyming feel. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I am heading out the door. Just wanted to show you guys what it is that I have kind of set up for them. Um, so my sub is only going to be teaching three different groups. I have the first one with some words that they're going to be practicing and writing. The book that they are reading that I showed you guys just a little bit ago. Um, and then my algebra group is going to be practicing some order of operations. I just put them on cards for her with the answers on the back of the cards. And then my uh, one reading group that she's going to be instructing is going to be working on themes. So I have them kind of having a discussion there and then completing a sort together. So that's all I have for them. I am going to go ahead and head out. I have 10 minutes before I need to be there, so I'm going to rush out the door and get there as soon as possible. Hopefully, I'll talk to you guys afterwards. So, I just got out of the meeting not that long ago. It is my lunch time, and I didn't have anything to for lunch, so I was not about to go out and try to figure out if I can eat something out and about. Um, so, I stopped home to get some cereal, and I've been spending the last, like, 10 minutes or so just working on report cards and getting some of those things done and then I should be heading back to the school very very soon. It was a good meeting. Um, we talked about e-portfolios today. Um, we continue to talk about um, common assessments, student mastery, that type of thing. That's all part of the CIA like plan what we what we are there to do. Um, but I am very excited to see like e-portfolio start starting to roll out. Um, and more information that we're going to get on that, which I think is going to be really, really exciting. Um, I had cereal for lunch because that's all I had. I really need to make food, but I wasn't home last night and I'm not going to be home tonight because we are doing the community book read. So I don't know what I'm going to cook. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to cook again. Um, busy day. I like this lighting. <laughs> busy, busy day. Um, so I have almost all of my DRAs finished up. Um, I was able to go in and put up my math comments in for my report cards and I got my, my grades put in for my math area. So now all I have to do is just my reading and my writing um, and then I should be done for that. Those are due tomorrow by four o'clock. <sighs> so I'm going to get them done. Luckily, I am going to have some time before the community book read to be able to just kind of sit and focus on getting some of those, all of all the rest of that finished. My hope is to be able to get that done before the community book read so then I don't have to worry about it. That means on Wednesday morning, all I have to worry about is just getting done with my... Um, my observation and then Thursday I have data meetings so I need to make sure that I have all of that information entered in but I don't have to worry about it until Wednesday so I'm just not gonna worry about it until Wednesday <laughs> um, I'm gonna focus on getting report cards finished up um, hopefully I'll see you guys whenever you know back at school maybe during my break oh no I can't see you during my break um, so during my break that I have when my kids go to special, once I get back to school, uh, I have to go and have my pre-observation meeting with my assistant principal. And yeah, that's really about it. I just wanted to update you guys. I might go give some more chocolates and I'm going to continue working on report cards. School has been over for quite some time. It is a little bit past 6 o'clock. Uh, 6.30 is my community book read for my district. Uh, they invite parents out, principals, like everybody in the community is able to, and welcome to read like the book selection, selection for this year. Um, we've been reading Freedom to Learn. Um, it's a great book. It's by Will Richardson and it's just talking about uh, how our schools have been kind of failing us without 
progressing with our times. So, um, for instance, if you think about technology and how far technology has come, um, our world around us is moving like a hundred miles a minute. And it seems like schools kind of drag their feet uh, to move. And he kind of goes into reasons why schools are failing us. And then, you know, what are some ways that we can start changing this within the public school system and it was interesting it's a really good read it's a very easy read it's not very very long i think it's like you see like you can read it in a day if you had like a snow day you could get it done um but yes so we're gonna go do that i'm going with kt um to the middle school we're gonna kind of sit in and just kind of talk about what we read today <laughs> or what we've read for this community book read um i have my observation in the morning I ended up changing out my learning targets. I got a few things ready for math. I did need to pull out some of my pattern blocks, so I'm about to go and grab those. Uh, and then I have to do some report card stuff tonight when I get home. Um, but here's kind of what everything looks like. So here are my learning targets. I ended up moving my little basketball hoop down just a little bit just because it was way too high. Um, but now I have it to where I can um, like it's very big and the kids can kind of see what their targets are instead of struggling to read it. Um, my table is pretty much emptied out except for the folders that need to go out in the morning. Um, I have one of the measuring tools that I'm supposed to use for one of my math groups. And uh, I need to grab pattern blocks, which I'm pretty sure that I have some. I do have a few. I feel like I don't have enough of my yellow shapes. Hmm. That's all money. What is this? Oh, that's dice. Okay, so it looks like that's all I have. I may be able to get away with that. I'm not really sure. We'll see. If not, I can probably make copies of some. So, ah, oh, this little bag is falling apart. Ugh. So I have three, I think, in there. I need to make sure at least every student has a yellow. It's gonna be my goal. One. Oh my goodness. Two, three. Now I've just made a mess. Four. Okay, so I just need to borrow one yellow, and I think I'm good for all the rest of the colors. So I'm going to need those because we're going to be finding the area tomorrow. Um, so we're going to talk about area to create, like, if this is a unit, so how many units would be for the area for this um, hexagon. And then we also are going to look like, look at if this was one unit, then how much would one of the triangles be? So they would have to say, oh, it's one third. So a third. Um, but yeah, so that's going to be what we're doing for one of my math groups tomorrow during my observation. A lot of exploratory learning, which I think is going to be really, really good. And then my second one, we're going to continue working with parentheses, brackets, and braces. That is pretty much it. That's all I have going on for today. I am very, very excited to talk to you guys about my PBL because my kids did such a great job today. I continued letting them look into kind of research and figuring out where it was that they were going. Um, so... Um, so my kids, and I have to figure out a better way of kind of setting this up, but my researchers were in charge of getting the interview with Mrs. B, which they did to do today, and they were so cute. They did like a little video and everything. Oh, I loved it, but now they're going to have to kind of transcribe that video. Um, they're creating a survey. They actually decided to do a Google survey, um, and they showed me something that they came up with, and then I kind of had them go back and kind of think of a few of their items, like having maybe vegetables, because they said it was only one question. They would only select one answer. So I said, try to see if you can figure out how to make it as a select three um, and then having two different questions one for vegetables one for fruit so that they can send it out to the entire school and then collect the data from that my researchers were able to look at the Penn State website for seeds versus seedlings they collected a lot of great data and were able to share it today um, so they have kind of an idea of where they want to go for tomorrow um, and it was so funny like my farmers who were looking at the cost of seeds versus seedlings they couldn't quite get a ton of prices so tomorrow they said that they were just gonna make phone calls out to different companies to look at the seedlings to kind of get an idea of how much they would cost. 
I was so incredibly proud of them. They, they are very, very engaged. Um, they are taking it extremely seriously, which I love that they are so into it. Um, I need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like you really wanted to know that. And then I'm going to be heading out pretty soon. Y'all, I'm doing it. I'm kicking butt this week. It may be a stressful week, but I am like handling it like a boss. I'm telling you. Okay, gotta go. Bye. Y'all, I finally made it to school this morning. <laughs> I went back to my house twice. <sighs> um, funny story, because the first time that I went back, I went back because one of my students is looking for a book. And I was like, I am not gonna go to school until I go and look for that book. So I was like halfway here, um, which I don't like live far. Like I live probably, I don't know, five, eight minutes from my house. Like, I would live like five, eight minutes from here from work. So, I go back halfway here. I go back to uh, the house to go and look for the book. Can't find the book. There was no luck. Um, I'm like adamant. I'm going to just go and probably get it during my lunch break at the bookstore so that he can have it. Because, bless his little heart. He needs that daggone book. Um, anyways, so then I left after looking for the book get all the way here and uh, wouldn't you know it I forgot my badge <laughs> so I had to drive all the way back home to get my stinking badge so that I could get into the school um, I'm here I'm here probably about 30 40 minutes later than what I wanted to be here uh, I have observation this morning I have a data meeting this morning so what I'm gonna do is go print off the things for my data meeting um, and then quickly look over my plans for my groups this morning make sure that I have everything ready to go um, and then I will catch up with you guys once I have that I just got back from my data meeting. Everything went really well. Um, I was glad that my other two partners were there with me to kind of talk through um, some of the things that we're noticing just about our kids and how we can better help them. Um, I am frantically, nervously getting everything ready for my observation today. Um, so my morning group is pretty much taken care of. I have my book, the words that we're gonna be practicing. We're gonna continue working on that. Um, and then for my CPM group, they're going to come in and it's kind of a fun lesson. Like I really, really like it. They're going to come down and I'm going to give them the scenario that we're going to get a new table because, uh, my assistant principal is so nice because he's the one that's observing, but he is so nice and he is going to offer to get us a new table for our room. Uh, and they're going to, I'm just going to tell them to measure. So they're going to have to come up with using the tools that I provide them, paper clips, um, index cards post-it notes, rulers, you know, yardsticks, papers, like anything that they I, I have kind of out, they can use it as a measuring tool. Then we're gonna talk about the different ways to be able to measure. Well, we can measure height, width, uh, length. Um, we can measure the inner area. So we're gonna eventually get to that point where we're measuring the area. I'm gonna end up modeling that for them. And then we're gonna be using these pattern blocks to be able to talk a little bit more in depth about area um, and discussing you know if it's one unit if one shape is one unit then how many units would this other shape be um, and we're also going to look at it as whole numbers and then going into fractions as well so that's kind of our investigation for today for CPM and then for my algebra group we're talking about parentheses brackets and braces I'm going to give them a problem for them to kind of explore within the very beginning to try and solve it and then I'm going to present them with the information that they'll need to know for parentheses brackets and braces um, and which to solve first and have them go through we're going to discuss what is it that they noticed that came out differently about it um, and why they believe that they need to understand that you have kind of kind of an order to completing uh, some of these multiple multiple grouping symbols so we're going to discuss that I'm going to give them some problems to practice and then I'm going to give them an error analysis to be able to go back out and work with with a partner they're going to complete a discussion board in Schoology and then they're finally going to be given kind of like a tricky one where uh, I'm going to remove the brackets braces and parentheses and they're going to see if they're going to try to they're going to have to try to figure it out and we'll give them the answer so they're going to have to kind of figure out the grouping and the way the grouping symbols need to go um, in order to achieve that number it's kind of a tricky one but I 
I thought it would be fun because the error analysis shouldn't take them too long. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we are at. I'm gonna finish getting everything together and then, hi. It's the end of the day and I had my observation this morning. <laughs> I don't feel incredibly confident about my observation. I feel like I'm having a really off teaching day. Um, I'm making very silly mistakes that I shouldn't be making. Um, just as far as like mathematically, grammatically, like anything that you can think of, I'm kind of making some of those mistakes. And I think somebody's gonna walk into my room. So I may not be able to answer this. Um, so I feel like I'm making a ton of silly mistakes. And uh, so here's kind of how it went. <laughs> He walks in and I am conferring with students, helping students with some of the problems that they're having um, and going through kind of some of the questions that they have, right? Um, my CPM group, group starts. Well, I normally have five kids there, but one was sick, another was absent, so I only had three. Of the three, I did have um, one behavior issue that I had to take care of. Sorry, Kim's coming in. Hola. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I had my partners ended up walking into my room and then my assistant principal ended up walking in my room. Um, they're all gone now. Uh, so for my observation, I was working with a couple of students just on a math problem that they weren't understanding. So we were kind of walking through it and my assistant principal kind of takes a seat um, and then like probably two minutes later, it's time for my first rotation to happen. It's my CPM group. So during my CPM group, um, I try to make things a little bit fun for them and I want to kind of make it, I don't know, I just like fun and interactive things and I like things that are almost like that novelty feel. I loved it in kindergarten. I love it here. Um, and with March Madness coming up, I have like a little basketball hoop. So I figured, you know what, the kids are going to, and I had papers like this, they're all crumbled up now, but it had something for them to review from the day before. So for instance, my CPM group was working on mental math strategies. So I gave them a problem to solve on their people. They had to use paper, they had to give me the answer and they had to tell me what strategy they used, um, to help them solve this. So they put it in and they kind of rolled it up and they threw it, they tried to throw it into the hoop and then we moved on with our lesson. Uh, the lesson itself was really, really good. It was extremely engaging. Uh, we didn't get through a lot of what I wanted them to get through, but that's okay because I had them go back out as a group and start kind of exploring and working through it and then we're just gonna discuss it tomorrow. <sighs> Here's the bad part. So during this, one of my kids decides that he's gonna be funny and the paper that I was using to show them the surface area of like how to find the surface area of this table, he ends up taking it, balling it up and starts trying to throw it into the hoop. So I get upset at him. <laughs> So I pretty much tell him that is enough. You need to sit down. And so he goes and he sits down. So that was one thing that ended up happening. The second part that ended up happening, and I didn't even realize this until the very, very end of it. And this goes to show you that every single teacher pro will make a mistake and that it's going to be okay. Was that I did my fraction incorrectly when I was teaching them how to find the surface area. So like, if I was to put out my papers, we had like one paper stood for one unit. So a paper like this stood, a, stood for a unit. So we were trying to figure out how many units of area the table was. So I had, I think it was 13 um, full sheets of paper, seven half sheets. And then there was one section where if it was as a half, I had to then put it into thirds to be able to say that it was this much like this is how big it was well i ended up not thinking about hey this is a full unit i was making this a full unit and i said that it was two-thirds versus actually being one-third and i didn't think about that until the very very end of it <laughs> of the whole thing so um it was funny because he came in this afternoon to talk to us about another student that we have and we just kind of started laughing about it and so he goes it's gonna happen it's mistakes you know it's not a big deal so it's not again it's not that big of a deal i'm gonna just pull my kids back we're gonna discuss it i'm gonna turn it into a teaching moment <laughs> Um, and then I'm just gonna be okay with it. So that was the second thing that happened. The third thing that happened is during my CPM group, one of my sweet boys decides that he's gonna bring the EV3 in and he's gonna drive the EV3 in during my lesson and it's like making noise and it ends up saying good morning. <laughs> All I do is just 
point and I send them back out. Ugh. All right, so that was the third thing that happened. Then we start to switch. Okay, so my CPM group goes back and they're working actually really, really well back there and I'm very excited about them. The girl that was in that group did not want to work with the boys and that is okay. I kind of left it as it is and you know, I talked with her afterward and everything is fine. So they're working back there in the back on the, some of the lessons that I had them doing. My algebra group comes up, they have the exact same thing where I give them a problem um, for order of operations without any like grouping symbols and they had to solve it and they had to throw it in and they did a really good job with that. So then that was done and I get them talking about parentheses, brackets and braces. I give them a problem to try to solve and so they tried to solve the problem with the partner they're kind of having discussion on it and so I see another friend over there that's very, 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 very much so off task. So I had to go over there, get her situated, pull out her materials to make sure that she was kind of on top of things so she was good to go. Then he ended up informing me just a little bit later that during that exact same group that I had one young man who was on email. <laughs> Ay Dios mio. But it was fine. Uh, the entire thing, he thought that it was a, a really good lesson. Obviously, there I'm not a perfect teacher. I don't expect to be a perfect teacher. I try to do my very best every single day. <sighs> it's just one of those days where I was just not completely perfect. <laughs> um, so... My observation is done. I feel really good about, look at that, my hair is just a hot mess. I feel really good at the fact that I was able to kind of talk to him after this afternoon. Cause typically like you don't talk to your principal or your assistant principal that comes in and does the observation. You don't talk to them until you sit down with them that day for like your post observation, you know, whatever. Um, I felt better kind of talking to him. I did mention, I was like, okay, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna throw myself under the bus because I just need to like get it out. And so he did say that he noticed that I did the fraction incorrectly. And I told him, I was like, you know, we're just gonna kind of talk about it and have like, that's gonna be a discussion point for tomorrow. And that's how I'm gonna open up the conversation. And uh, um, that's when he ended up mentioning the other boy who was on, you know, the iPad and he was on something that he should not have been on. But he also said that he did notice some really great things. And there were some really great things that was happening in our room. And he made a really, really good point at that, you know, we are blind if we believe that every single child in our room is going to be on task all the time. How many times do we as like, as adults sit in a meeting and we check our email or we start talking to somebody or we get distracted with something else. And it's so true because we do and we need to remember that we can't expect our kids to be perfect, especially when we don't do those things ourselves. So other than that, it was a pretty good day. In the afternoon, um, I was able to get all of my reading comments done for my report cards. So my report cards are done. All I have to do now is my post observation. I have to do my scoring and then I have to fill out my evaluate, like, my reflection piece to it. Um, so I need to do that tonight. And then I also have to do my DRAs and score my writing assessments and get those in. Um, and I think that's it. I don't have to do data meetings for math for tomorrow. So I got, I'm done. I don't have to deal with that. So I'm very, very thankful for that piece. But <clears throat> all in all, it was a pretty good day. I have a hot mess. The kids kind of passed out some Valentines. We had a special snack at the end of the day um, for read aloud, but we didn't make a huge fuss of it. So, um, but yeah, it was good. So I'm going to go home now. I wanted to tell you guys about my awful observation that I had and just know that, you know, <laughs> Sometimes it happens. <laughs> I am going to say that I am very excited about tomorrow because tomorrow is jump rope for heart. And that means that I get to dress very casual athletic wear, which I'm excited about. All right. I'm going to catch you guys later on tomorrow morning to be precise. And I hope you guys had a really great Valentine's Day. Um, I want you to know that I'm sending you all a piece of my heart because I love you all very much. Uh, thank you for always supporting my channel and for supporting me and being so positive and doing the absolute best that you can do for your kids out there and for being committed to them because they truly do deserve it. So, all right, that's it. I'm going to end it there. I'll catch you guys in the morning. Today is Jump Rope for Heart Day. Uh, that means a couple of different things. 
one, I get to dress very casual today. So I have my jump rope for heart on, my t-shirt, it's monsters. I couldn't find my little gray jacket, so I stole my husband's like, LI jacket. Um, and that makes me really, really happy that I get to dress like this today. Um, second thing means that we will lose our special. And then third means that I am gonna go kick butt jump roping with my students. Just gonna throw that out there. I am an awesome jump roper. I am feeling so much better about my observation yesterday. I know it didn't go as great as what I was hoping it was gonna go, um, but especially after talking with my assistant principal, um, he made me feel better. So I'm just not gonna worry about it and I'm just gonna keep checking on <laughs> with what I gotta do. Uh, today, I don't really know what I have going on today. I'm sitting on the floor. I don't really quite know what I have going on today. Math is gonna be normal today. Um, lunch is gonna be normal today. Let's see. The afternoon, um, I have my kids working on a main idea and Kitty Tells passage. So they're reading a passage um, from Scholastic and then they are working on identifying the main idea and Kitty Tells from it. So from there, um, they are pretty much all working independently because I want that done by tomorrow morning um, so that I can kind of assess where they are as far as in for some of the informational standards that we have. Um, they are also building a summary from it and what I like about how Scholastic does it with StoryWorks is that they really do walk them through it. Um, it's very scaffolded so they kind of give them guiding questions to ask them, um, walk them through it and I have an example here so I can actually show it to you. So like, here's the main idea and Kitty tells here. Um, they give them some of the main ideas in this area and then they give them some of the key details and then they kind of ask them guiding questions to help, uh, help them understand what is it that they're looking for in the section. And then afterwards, they release all of the responsibility to the students. So then the students have to identify the main ideas for the other um, sections in the story. Um, and then they also have to identify the key ideas that's gonna support the main ideas. From there, they have to develop a summary. Um, and it's a very guided summary, which I like. Uh, so this is kind of what the summary like is like. So it's a guided summary, they're completing it, they're kind of answering those pieces to it to help them, you know, complete a summary for an informational text. So I just wanna see what my students can be able to do. So a lot of them are working independently, that's gonna allow me to be able to pull up conferences, um, really kind of touch base on kids as far as some of the literature standards that we've done, um, and then some of the other informational pieces that I've gotten back from them. So it's a good opportunity for me to kind of touch base on their book, but then I also kind of pull out things to this extent that I will give them. And I'm like, hey, so here's kind of what I've noticed that you're doing. Let me show you how we can go through and fix that. So I'm gonna pull conferences all afternoon um, and not pull groups for reading, which is pretty easy peasy. I'm really hoping that we're gonna meet with our PBL kids today. Yesterday we did not meet with our PBL kids. Um, we had to have like a little sit down. I feel like every couple of months we need to sit down with our kids and we need to remind them, hey, you're not supposed to be talking in the hallway. Hey, you're talking back. Whenever I ask you to do something, you say, yes, Mrs. Backman, and you do it. Um, so we're kinda, ha we had to have those conversations with our kiddos yesterday. Today, we're hoping to get to our PBL kids. That means that um, my researchers need to finish up with their survey and uh, designing that so that we can start getting that out. Um, I'm gonna go over their interview that they conducted with one of the teachers in the building regarding our pantry that we have for our community um, and then see if we can I'm gonna teach them how to create like an actual email with maybe some follow-up questions that they can do because they didn't do so much of the follow-up questions. They were asking the questions, they were listening, and then they would just go on to the next question without thinking of another question to kind of come back with. So I need to go over follow-up questions with them, how to write an appropriate email, um, and then check on their survey to make sure that it looks good. 
the farmers are doing a couple of different things. I have two groups that are gonna start researching on how to actually start the planting process, um, what are the materials that they're gonna need for the planting process, et cetera, et cetera. The, uh, a second group is working on cost. So they're gonna call, make phone calls to different companies um, in the area to determine the cost of seedlings. So we have an idea of seeds and how much those are gonna end up costing us, but we don't really know what the cost is going to be for seedlings so um i've given them the job of making phone calls so i need to go over how do we make phone calls you know what are you going to ask what is the information that you need to make sure you're having so we're going to set up kind of a chart with them so that they know exactly what they're supposed to be doing <laughs> um so much good times so much good fun um by the way i start a ja next week Um, and so our schedule is going to end up changing, but I'm not going to bother you guys with that this week. <laughs> I'll tell you all about that next week. <laughs> okay, I am headed off to go to my collab this morning. Um, I have everything ready for my two math groups and my one reading group uh, that I need to worry about like before lunch. <laughs> so let me show you guys what I have. Typically what I try to do is keep out my... CPM plans here because they are my third rotation. I have all of the papers that I'm going to need for that. Um, I also have a CPM book that's opened up for the kids. Then I have my bobs and the tweets. Um, I have their letters here that we're going to practice with words. And then I actually have um, their list right here. You guys see it? So I have their word list here um, that we will practice using some words. I also have the pattern blocks from yesterday's CPM group. Um, we're going to just kind of quickly review and I figured I'd go ahead and pull that out. So I am ready to go for this morning and now I'm just going to head off to collab. So I'm thinking that the struggle of this week has finally like hit me. <laughs> I have been so, so tired for the past like two hours. I just wanna go to bed. <laughs> um, it was a really good afternoon. There wasn't much to it. We did lose our special, but it wasn't a big deal. Uh, we went and saw the kids do jump rope. I danced because they had music on and I'm like, ooh, yeah, all right. Um, and then I attempted to do some jump roping and I realized that I am out of shape. <laughs> but other than that, it was a really good day. <laughs> I have to um, enter in my writing scores and my DRA scores. So I need to take those home. I'm probably going to sit on the couch. I need to go home and check on my husband because he's not feeling well. And I'm afraid that he might have the flu again. So I think I'm going to head home pretty quickly today and I'm not. I'm just going to leave it. Tomorrow we have a, a half day with the second half of it being dedicated to conferences so i'm gonna have my first round of conferences we don't have a lot going on but i do need to create like a sign out sheet and i need to get some lemonade and some sprite that i usually use to create like a a drink for parents because we always have like treats and stuff out for them so i think i'm gonna go and do that as well so i am gonna just leave you guys i'm sorry i'm not showing you guys much today but i'm just tired so um, hopefully I'll have a little bit more energy tomorrow so that I can show you guys some of the things that we're doing and kind of talk to you a little bit more about our PBL. Sorry, I gotta go to bed. Bye. I have been having kind of odd symptoms, just being very, very tired all the time um, when I'm getting plenty of sleep because I do sleep pretty well for the most part um so being tired a lot uh my hands re for the, like the past year are extremely swollen and my joints hurt really really bad um i've had like mood swings going up and down i've had uh, just like a number of different things that are going on um so i've been going to see a doctor for since like the beginning of the year um, having testing done and they came back with me having Hashimoto's so uh, Hashimoto's is like a thyroid issue it's an autoimmune thyroid issue that I have so my doctor for right now because my my TSH my T4 and my T3 are all coming back normal um, she wants to try a gluten-free diet. So gluten, there have been like studies out there saying that gluten is like a direct 
it connects to having thyroid issues so um, she wants to put me on a gluten-free diet um, she's put me on the highest dosage for vitamin D um, and then of course like drinking water exercising which I told her she was asking for too much there but <laughs> um, so I have been trying to go gung-ho on this whole like gluten-free diet um, I just yesterday filmed a what I eat in a work day video for like gluten-free version of how I'm kind of managing this I've been doing it for about a week and a half now um, and I am very much with someone who is used to going and getting a breakfast sandwich at least once a week from either like Dunkin Donuts McDonald's somewhere right and now I can't have it um, because of the bread so I went and just bought myself <laughs> patties sausage patties because what I found online said that sausage patties didn't have gluten I don't know if that's true or not but we're gonna find out um, so that's kind of the gist of it um, I'm not gonna make a big issue of it but that kind of hopefully explains to you guys why sometimes like I don't vlog or I like get really like I talk about being tired a lot that's because of that so I'm working on getting myself healthy and getting myself back to normal um today is a half day so the kids are gonna be here for half a day we have conferences in the afternoon um, and I went out and bought all of my ingredients at Walmart in order to make my lemonade pineapple lemonade um, sparkling it's called sparkling pineapple lemonade it's like a punch Thing. and I love 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 it so delicious um, so I have that to make for this afternoon for our conferences because we always make like a goodie table um, but other than that that's really about it I'm gonna figure out what we're doing today I think I'm gonna have uh, fourth grade because typically on these half days we have to be structured um, by grade level so we can't just have like our normal kids so uh, we are planning on beginning JA BizTown next week. So JA is gonna come and it's going to interfere a little bit with what our PBL is. So we've structured a schedule for the next six weeks so that we can teach JA every single day and kind of continue with the curriculum that we have for that so that the kids are ready for BizTown in April. And then on Thursdays and Fridays, the kids are gonna have an opportunity in the afternoon to work on their PBLs. So. And they'll be able to do it like throughout the the week like they can work on it during you know independent reading independent writing those types of things so they'll have opportunities to be able to work on it um so we have also decided that on thursdays and fridays we are going to so that we can kind of have this normal schedule do an isolated math unit so geometry and measurement um can tend to be a little bit more isolated where some of the other units you have to have some pre previous skills in order to be able to kind of master that unit um so we are going to give our kids the geometry and measurement for the pre-assessment today um, so that way we can kind of sort them and group them and put them into the rooms that they need to be in and then we're gonna start planning some of that curriculum but I am gonna eat my sausage patties <laughs> not on camera and I don't know figure out what it is that we're, we're doing today I'm gonna get all my things together so that's all that's all I had to tell you this morning oh goodness I really like this shirt by the way you see it it's pretty it's from Loft. It's really cute. Um, however, it's kind of cold right now. Um, it gets like on and off cold all day long. So I figured eh, I'm going to just put a sweater over it. So I'm just, I'll have plenty of opportunity to wear it in spring. So I just have like a nice chunky sweater. I do have a question for you guys. I want to know, are you someone who uh, for your like parent conferences, do you uh, dress fancier than what you would on a normal work day or do you dress the same that you always dress? I am someone that dresses the same that I always dress. I don't believe that I'm gonna come rolling up in here with a really cute little dress and you know high heels and a you know a blazer. I'm not doing that. Sometimes I wear blazers, sometimes I don't. But I am more of just somebody I'm just gonna dress the way that I normally dress because you know that they're not gonna roll up in here with the suit, so why am I gonna try to do it? Anywho, 
Um, so I'm curious to know what that, what you guys think. I would love to know that. Leave it down in the comments. I'm always like curious. A lot of people in my building here are, they dress up and I'm not one <laughs> to dress up. All right, I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna eat my patties, bye. I did wanna show you guys my planner for this week. I'm sorry that I didn't do like a day by day of this, but here's kind of what it ended up looking like in the very end. Um, normally I have more projects on here, but because my week was going to be so jam packed, I did not post my part, my projects up here because it just was not going to be priority this week. Um, and then for my top three on Monday, I had like my sub plans. I needed to finish math comments, my Mac night, which we did have, and it was very, very successful. Um, report cards were going to be due the next day, my data meeting, my community book read. Um, and that's kind of what I did in the very end. So we also had, um, I had a CIA meeting in the morning. Um, on Wednesday, my report cards, I kept focusing on that. I did do some of it here, but I had to finish it here, so it was taking me forever. Um, but I did just keep that as one of my only priorities for that day because that was the only thing that I was truly worried about. Um, I also did write down here that I needed to do the word study, word search, and notebook pages, which I did get done. Got my DRAs uploaded last night. Um, I did not get my writing uploaded. And then my observation, I did half of it and then I fell asleep. So <laughs> I have to finish the other half today. I got all the drinks for my lemonade today. Um, I need to finish up the word study check, um, test check, and then I need to finish checking off for cycle four. Um, and this is kind of what I have down today. I'm gonna go turn in a paper that I that can get checked off my list, but it is a priority for me today. Um, I have my conferences in the afternoon and then I need to do a word study video, which we ended up deciding to do and just teach it in person this week, but I still would like to do the video and get it uploaded so I don't have to worry about it next year. Um, I need to run my report card, so I'm going to go double check on that while I go drop that off. I'm going to give the assessments for math today, send home the new JA schedule, parent conference times in the folders is what I need to get together for this afternoon, and uh, that's really going to be about it. So I have an 8 o'clock meeting this morning, and I'm done. I feel like some of the times when I... I'm a little bit like flustered. Having my planner, having things written out just does make me feel so much better. Um, I have a second question for you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have like so many questions. Should I, my bangs are super duper long right now and I have not been cutting them. Um, should I cut my bangs, keep them, um, or let them grow out? So, they're really long right now. So I've been kind of just like pushing them off to the side like that, like say swoop bangs. Um, so should I keep them or should I let them grow back out? You guys let me know. I don't know. I like both of them and I miss, like I when I don't have my bangs, I miss my bangs. And when I do have my bangs, I miss not having my bangs. I don't know. I kind of go back and forth. So I'm going to let you guys end up deciding whether or not I should keep my bangs or not. Um, I'm going to go drop off that paperwork and then get my... Uh, uh, report cards and then I'm going to start trying to get some other things checked off my list.